Hey, howdy, hey, friends and neighbors, Scott here, and boy, I've got a treat for you today because we're going to look at the Malavasee family. That's the mallows. Yeah, we're not just taking one plant. We're going to look at a whole family and see what you can do with it. All right, sometimes, sometimes I like to look at just one plant at a time, you know, one plant and then identify another plant and learn everything about that and go to another. But sometimes it's really hand, handy also to look just at an entire family and see what properties carry over through the family and how you can identify members of that family. Because if you come across a mystery plant, if you're learning one plant at a time, you may not have come across that plant and then, well, you're stuck, you know, too bad. You, you know, good luck finding it on some kind of online database or in one of your books and stumbling across it. But if you know the different families, then even if you don't know the exact species of that plant, you might be able to get a pretty good guess at what family it belongs to, and that can make your search for identifying it a lot shorter and more productive. So, that said, let's look at the mallow family and see what we can glean from this. First of all, let's talk identification, and we'll start with the leaves. Now, mallows generally have alternate leaves, which means that you have a leaf coming out on one side of a stem, and then you go up the stem a little further, and then a leaf comes out the other side. They alternate back and forth. And they're usually palmately lobed. So let's break that down. So palmately means like a palm, so like your hand. And then lobe, uh, there's like the, the lobes. Think... um. Oak leaves often have a lot of lobes. Um, not always, but oak leaves are usually pretty lobey. Um, figs are lobed. Sassafras is lobed. So if you're familiar with any of these, mulberry can have lobes. Um, if you're familiar with these leaves, then I think you know what I mean where there are like projections and then it curves back in and then it curves back out and curves back in. Distinct sections where it's still one leaf, um, but it kind of has projections, and, and being palmately lobed would mean that it's um, that the lobes extend out from a central point, kind of like fingers on, uh, on your hand, on your palm. That picture there is probably not the best picture because it's, it's uh, more, more um, uh, toothy at the edge than it is lobed. Well, well, you know, you could, yeah, you could call that lobe because at the bottom those kind of stick out they're kind of a lobular, <laughs> lobular at the bottom. Um, and then the leaves also tend to be slimy or, you know, slippery when you, when you crush them. They'll have a, a slickeriness to them. And all of these identifying features, this is all what is generally true of the family, which is not to say that you won't find an exception here or there. These are just sort of the general rules for the family. For the flowers, they tend to be funnel-shaped, and they're regular flowers, like what you think of as a general flower. They're flower-shaped, not like um, like uh, the pea family has a very distinct flight, but it uh, uh, shaped, but it's not that radial symmetry. They have a uh, what do you call that bilateral symmetry, that up and down. I know I'm throwing out a bunch of words here, um, but they they look like regular flowers. <laughs> Um, they'll often have several bracts. That's back behind the flower. It's a modified leaf. You can you can look that term up if you need to, but it's just sort of a protective, supportive structure. Uh, they tend to have about three to five united or semi-united sepals. Those that's that's a structure that's sort of halfway in between a leaf and a petal, and they're behind the petals again, so you can't see it in the picture. Uh, now the part that's easier to see is they will they will have five separate petals. And they'll have many stamens, typically, that uh, are united to form this like column around the pistil in the center of the plant. So it has this real distinctive bloop thing sticking out the middle of the plant. <laughs> it's a lot like, um, oh, can't think of what family I'm thinking of, um, but you can see in the picture there. And then uh, the type of fruit that it makes is usually a cheese. Uh, when you talk about common mallow, the seeds, they call them cheeses. It's this circular arrangement of uh, seeds in wedges that look like a like a roll, like a block of cheese, like a circle of cheese. Or like uh, if you play Trivial Pursuit, you know, you put the wedges in that circle thing. That's, that's what they look like a lot of times. They don't all do that, but a lot of them do. As far as edibility, almost every member of this family has something edible on it. Quite a few, um, most of them, uh, you can eat the greens and you can eat the flowers. That's not universally true. The only one that I can think of that's definitely uh, not edible is cotton. And even on the cotton, sometimes people use the cotton seed oil. Uh, 
So, you know, I, I guess even that one has something. But um, most of the time, they'll have something edible. Still a good idea to double check it. Um, but they, uh, now let's see. Oh yeah, I, I, this note here. I was wondering why I put slimy and thickening. Um, this is a, an, a property you want to take into account if you're going to eat these is uh, that texture-wise, if you're a texture eater, that slimy texture might bother you. Now, when you fix okra, that's part of the fun, putting that in a gumbo or something, and it really thickens it up. And a lot of the a lot of the plants in this family will thicken your soup or your stew when you put it in there, so you can use these strategically. I mean, if you threw something like, um, you know, mallow and a hollyhock and okra in a gumbo together, man, that thing would be so thick, you probably couldn't pour it out. You'd have to use a knife. <coughs> Pardon Medicinally, that mucilaginous slime is also uh, the most important factor that, that carries over from species to species. It's a lot like you would use uh, aloe or like uh, the gel inside of a cactus. You can use it topically to soothe um, you know, cuts and scrapes, bites, any inflamed skin, sunburns, and other injuries. Uh, and they uh, typically will have a uh, healing property, not just an anti-inflammatory or a pain-relieving Typically, these these will have a a, a vulnerary or, or healing st stimulating property, and you can take it internally as a demulcent and expectorant, something to soothe your throat or to soothe internal issues too. Um, if you want to try this out on uh, a common plant, you know, if if you don't have uh, if you don't have hollyhocks or whatever in your garden, if you have some okra. Chop up some of the okra pods and put those in a cup of water overnight. And then come back in the morning and and you know pour that out into your hand. Feel all that that slime and that you know all that snot that it's released. That's uh, that's some good stuff for a sore throat or for a, a sunburn. Um, and the mucilaginous property also makes it pretty handy as a binder when you're making herbal pills. It uh, helps to hold everything together. Uh, I believe I have a video where. I was testing out the uh, the Grow Networks uh, uh, medicine maker kit. I, I did a, a video demo of one of their one of their uh, lessons in that, and I think we used some I, I think we used some marshmallow root powder in that to make herbal pills with my kids. So you can find that on the if you're on you know YouTube or Facebook, you can find that in the you know you can search for that. And some examples of plants in this family would include. Common mallow, it's a weed, it grows around all over, except that I have it, I brought it in intentionally into my yard because I wanted to encourage it. And uh, it's alive, but it's it's not spreading like it's supposed to. It's supposed to be a weed, and I think uh, I think I may need to, um, if I can get it to make some seeds, I may try to spread it around to a little different location. Uh, marshmallow, that's a good water-loving one. A, a lot of these like uh, wet places, I guess not, every, not everything, but... Uh, those mallows and marshmallows, especially like wet ground. Okra, hollyhocks, cotton, which is not edible, again, uh, not, not very easily. It does have some medicinal properties. Couldn't tell you off the top of my head what they are. It's not, I don't think it's one of the um, safer plants. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not speaking from a, with a lot of authority on that one. I, I don't ever, I don't ever play with cotton as a medicinal plant. I don't, I don't have any growing. I've never bought any, so, you know, feel free to to not listen to me on that one. Our hibiscus, hibiscus is great. Use those flowers to make your teas and stuff. And uh, uh, Althea, which um, I believe Althea and Hollyhock, I think they used to be in the same close group and they've been split off just a little bit, I think. Anyway, there are some examples. And um, that's going to wrap up my mallow presentation. Uh, hopefully you know enough now to find one in the wild and you know verify that you have the right thing from the slimy leaves and the uh, the type of blooms they have and then you can start experimenting from there. Or you know snag some okra from your neighbor's garden this summer and give it a try because that's an easy way to experiment with the mallow family. And now it's time for my customary shameless plug. If you're looking for more uh, more videos, more information in general, and you want to support the anti-zombie effort, why don't you head over to patreon.com slash foragers guide, where for just a dollar a month, you can get all kinds of extra goodies, including a, uh, a PDF, uh, a downloadable PDF uh, abbreviated guide to the Goodness, I'm messing this all up. I'm still going to take this because I'm not going to re-record it because I waited too long to do this, so I'm just going to take it in one take. The abbreviated guide 
the abbreviated forger's the forger's abbreviated guide to the zombie apocalypse of something one one of those is the title something like that is the title and someday I will have the full non abbreviated guide but uh, yeah you can check that out for a dollar you know if you just want to sign up uh, you know pay your dollar get the book and then get out that wouldn't hurt my feelings you know that's that's just part of the way you do the system okay that's gonna wrap the video up thanks for listening tomorrow we will have something else as we continue the 31 day video challenge keep your eyes out for plants and zombies see ya